Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Tonight we're going to talk about the difference between a Harmony H1204 1972 model and uh, behind me over here <laughs> is a 1969 Silvertone. Now, originally this was sold as a 1967 Silvertone uh, back here. And you've seen me, if you've been on the channel, you've seen me playing it quite a bit. It was rebuilt by Scott Baxendale. And, uh, and so that process, the dating of it, uh, some of these instruments can be a little tricky. But I did finally find an absolute expert on dating on dating these things, and uh, they pointed out uh, based off of the serial number and walked me through how to do that, and I was able to determine this is this is actually a 1969, uh, which uh, which is fine, right? So there's there's some differences between these guitars. One was uh, rebuilt by uh, a gentleman up in Maine named Brian. And I'm going to drop a link to his channel. Uh, he takes these old instruments, uh, not just these, but others as well. And and uh, I think more as a hobby uh, than anything else, he rebuilds them. So uh, he did some interesting things with this one, and we're going to talk a little bit about that as we go through the video. But I really wanted to start out with just doing a sound comparison. And then uh, when we get done with that, I will tell you what it sounds like to my ears right here in this little small studio area, okay? And uh, again, this is a 1972 Harmony H1204, and you can say, I believe Brian, the gentleman that uh, rebuilt this, called it uh, Coyote Ugly. And <laughs> I think he's right, because it is. It's battered. It has seen its share of issues. He actually replaced the tuners. Those are a Clunson, uh, a Clunson style of tuner. And then he took quite a bit off of the back of this neck because this was originally a lot, a pretty hard V, I think. And so he shaved it down and then he did a little Art Deco there, as you can see. And uh, his wife pointed out to him that uh, they do not match. The points don't match. I told him I didn't care much about that sort of thing, so it didn't matter to me. Overall, the body's in good shape. There's no cracks on it. It's got an interesting looking pick guard, which I thought was kind of cool. Matched the guitar, but uh, uh, this one, uh, and it also has his label in there. And I will put that up there just so you can see it and uh, see if you can get a visual on that. I'll hold it there for a moment. Uh, but uh, what, what he does, uh, for those of you that may not know much about this sort of thing, these older catalog guitars, which is really what they're called, because they were sold out of Sears, Montgomery Wards, uh, that kind of thing back in the day. And back in the day was like, you know, 1969, 1972, right? So back in the day then. Uh, and 50s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, these things were sold out of catalogs. And uh, uh, so what the way they originally came was there was five back braces on this thing on the back on the back part across the back for support and they had what was called ladder bracing right ladder bracing uh across underneath the top of the guitar so this is a spruce top on this one and it is well it was 1972 so however 50 50 years old right that's uh 50 years old now yeah so uh, what what they do, the, the, the ladder bracing is fine, and there's guitars you can buy out there today that are actually ladder braced from the factory that are brand new. Uh, it's designed, I think, the ladder bracing gives it more of that woody kind of sound uh, that you would have heard like back in the 20s and 30s. Later, X-bracing came along, and there's various forms of X-bracing on these guitars, all right? And Scott Baxendale... Uh, who rebuilt this Silvertone, uh, has his own proprietary uh, brace pattern, X-bracing X pattern. 
and uh, and Brian uses an X bracing pattern. I dropped my phone down in here and kind of rolled it around a little bit, and I'm going to try to pull that video, and I might try to put that up here so that you can see it. Uh, but uh, it's all new bracing inside. He took the five back braces and reduced those to four. Uh, that's what Gibson does. That's what Martin does. I, I, I think others do that as well. But uh, uh, that's, that's more than enough braces across the back of the guitar. He uh, re, 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 uh, put another bridge on it. Uh, uh, probably replaced the nut on it. I don't know. I had to go back and look at the specs on it. Replace the keys. There's nothing he could do about the headstock. The paint job is atrocious. Uh, it's just been, I, I don't know, maybe a, a, a child tried to refinish it at one time, but uh, it's pretty bad. But he did a complete neck reset, so that neck is solidly in there. And I, I, I like this guitar. I like it a lot. And I got a really good buy on this particular guitar. And uh, so I have no complaints. Uh, when I got it from Maine, I did a slight tweak of the neck because the action on it, uh, uh, well, my high E down here uh, uh, on the top string here, it uh, it was really, uh, it, it wasn't, the annotation on it was slightly off. And, and that, you know, you make a long trip and, of course, the shipping companies will leave these things out on the dock. And uh, you can go from 25 degree weather to uh, 70 degree weather. And uh, so they, they can go through some real temperature changes from time to time. And so that's why when anytime you get a guitar in, you want to leave it in the box it came in uh, for at least a full day before you open it up. And if you did not know that, you know it now. Uh, it's not true if you're going to a guitar store and you buy that, uh, buy a guitar there, but... Uh, and you're bringing it home, well, that's that's a different deal. But if you have one shipped from a different climate, uh, it's a good idea to leave them leave them in there and let them slowly adapt and adjust to uh, what's going on in your home, right? Uh, because the last thing you want to do is pay good money for something, and then you, you, you open it up too quick, and next thing you know, you have all kinds of cracks and uh, checking that just... A, you know, you know, sometimes I've heard stories of people pulling it out after uh, moving from extreme temperatures and they hear this uh, snap, crackle, pop going on and it's the finish on the guitar. Uh, so you can you can ruin one really quickly if you're not careful. Uh, you know, it's a funny thing. I never knew about this sensitivity of these things when I was uh, in my younger years, but uh, there would, right? There would. And... Uh, and so they, you know, wood, it likes consistency. Uh, so, you know, that's why you don't go from extreme temperatures, extreme humidity. Uh, you don't make these extreme changes with a guitar and uh, electric or acoustic. If you can possibly avoid it. And a lot of musicians that, you know, and I'm talking famous musicians out there. It's one of the things that they test most is they're flying to all these different climates, and if they want to, if they want to bring their instruments of choice, uh, they know they're rolling the dice a bit, and they may lose them. And periodically, they do lose them. And I don't mean lose them as in can't find them. I mean lose them as in damage, necks warping, uh, finishes cracking. You don't think about that as a music listener. Uh, but if you're out there and you uh, do professional music, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And because uh, these quality guitars are not inexpensive. And so you want to take very good care of them. So 1972 Harmony H1204 Spruce Top uh, Birch Back and Sides, which can't tell anything much about the grain here because of you know it being a black guitar but uh uh it's birch and then uh, some kind of poplar wood for the neck uh but uh all solid woods right and and that's that's a good thing we like solid woods i like them if i can get them so we'll do a little sound test between the 69 silver tone 319 and the harmony h1204 and then we'll talk for a minute uh before we end the video hopefully you'll enjoy this okay <laughs>
All right, folks, what did you think? Uh, Harmony, H1204. Spruce top, mahog- uh, birch back and sides, poplar neck. It's been rebraced with X bracing. It's eliminated uh, one of the back braces. It's now got four braces across the back instead of five. Again, that's birch on the back and side, solid birch, by the way. Uh, the silver tone uh, spruce top. It is a 1969, whereas this guitar is a 1972. Uh, and uh, this was redone by Scott Baxendale back here, this, uh, uh, this silver tone over here in this hand right here. Hello. And uh, it came with the pick guard, by the way. I, I took the pick guard off on the, on the uh, uh, I'm looking at the wrong one. I took the pick guard off on the silver tone. Uh, because uh, I just like the look of it better, and I don't normally use a pick anyway, so there's not much concern about me doing too much damage. Uh, I, I think the pick guard on the H1204 looks pretty nice. This is a nice playing guitar. It's not this guitar. If I had to choose between the two of them, it's the silver tone all day long. However, I still think Brian... Silver tone all day long. I think Brian over here did a really good job of rebracing this guitar and having it sturdy to where it can be played for another 50, 60 years. Uh, and it's got a nice sound to it. Doesn't have the depth, doesn't have the volume that the uh, Silver Tone 319 has over here. Uh, th- there is a wealth of depth on this guitar, in my opinion. Now, I'm sitting in here in studio listening to it. And I'm trying to get it across to everybody out there. So I'm curious, did it come across that way to you that we have more depth, more volume, more richness out of the Silvertone 319 than we do the Harmony 12 H1204? Uh, or is there something wrong with my hearing? Uh, but again, doesn't make it any less of a quality guitar. The Harmony H1204 is a nice player guitar. I think I paid about what the guitar is worth. I may have paid just a little more than that, but uh, but we're, we're right at the ballpark. The amount of work that, if you talked about sheer labor, I would have paid probably three times what I paid for it because Brian uh, up in Maine, who I'm going to drop a link to his channel uh, because he does redo guitars and he's a very talented individual. I don't know what he does for a living, but whatever it is... Uh, He's a talented guy. I'll just say that. Uh, it's uh, it's he called it coyote ugly. He called it coyote ugly. He called it coyote ugly. I agree with him. It's coyote ugly. You can't tell it all that much from the uh, well. You might be able to uh, from uh, from the camera, but it is coyote ugly. Somebody did something to the finish along the way. But remember, it's fifty years old, and uh, I'm sure it's been in the hands of a few kids along the way. Uh, I like what he did on the back. He just tried to create a little artwork back here with uh, uh, with this deco-looking thing that he did with the neck. And and uh, he did shave the neck down. It's a pretty comfortable C, maybe close to a D, but I'd say more of a C-shaped neck. Uh, uh, he actually put in a functioning two-way truss rod, I believe, on this one. Because I know I adjusted the truss rod here. Uh, it is, and it works uh, very well. It's a, it's a nice little guitar. It's probably worth about what I paid for it. And uh, the Silver Tone is a nice guitar, and it's worth every penny of what I paid for it. Uh, probably worth a little more. I, I think last check, uh, you're not touching one of Scott's guitars these days for what I paid for this guitar. I'll just say that, okay? But I'll drop a link to both of them. Scott Baxendale over here on this Silvertone 319 and uh, Brian up in uh, in Maine with this uh, H1204. Now, Brian has quite a few guitars up there and does an excellent work. Uh, I've looked at the inside of this guitar and he does really, really good work. And the thing is, is he's very easy to deal with, too. He's much like Scott in that regard. If there was anything that I wasn't satisfied with this guitar, I could have sent it right back to him, and he would have taken it back. He's just that kind of guy. Uh, It's a weird little guitar over here. Uh, 
weird from the standpoint of ugly and yet got a bit of a beauty to it. You know what I mean? So, but, uh, you know, this is a, this is back porch guitar for me. Uh, uh, but it's a, it's a good player. But again, not the volume, not the depth that I'm hearing here with both of them uh, and the richness that I get from the Silvertone 319. Now, that could be a lot of factors. I'll be honest with you. I do not know if that is mahogany or birch. But 1969, folks, I'm thinking... There's a good chance that, uh, I know this is a spruce top. You can plainly see that. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm no wood expert. I think I've mentioned that before. But uh, it does have a mahogany sound to me. I will say that. Uh, is there a good chance this is uh, birch? Yes. Yeah, probably so. But I don't really know. I don't know enough about woods. But it's a 1969 Silvertone 319, 1972 Harmony H1204. What'd you think, folks? Let me know. Would you? All right, everybody. You can clearly see I took a break. <laughs> Different hat, whole nine yards. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'm curious to know what you think between the two. Uh, the richness and the depth does seem to emanate from this. I don't know if everybody would agree or not, but... Uh, you know, again, one third the cost of what I paid for this three years ago, uh, whatever it was when I bought this. Uh, you couldn't touch this guitar today for what I paid for it. Uh, yeah, it's uh, 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 we're we're not comparing apples to apples here, but I, I'm a I'm a uh, what am I? I am a I'm a, I'm a sucker for vintage catalog guitars. I, I just am. The old Sears catalog, Montgomery Ward's catalog, 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, this, uh, can you see it? Yeah, you can see it right there. That super tone is a 1937, 38. Um, the catalog for that era shows that fretboard and that particular guitar and it's the uh, i don't think they produced a catalog in 39 maybe i can't remember all the details on that but that's how that guitar is dated it's the only way to date them they mass produced them and uh but they used quality woods and if you if you get a good one so for me right here is what i'll use for if I'm going to go out on the back porch, that kind of thing, as I talked about earlier. And that's not to say it, there, a, a great job wasn't done on the bracing and the work that was done on it. Uh, Two-way functioning truss rod. Trust rod. Uh, you had to peel the fretboard off to do that and then put everything back. Okay, So from a, uh, from a craftsmanship standpoint, uh, it, it was really, really well done. Because, you know, think about it. In 1972, that guitar... You know, if it cost uh, probably $60, I'd be surprised. And this one probably cost somewhere in that vicinity as well. Uh, these guitars didn't cost a lot of money out of the catalog, and they were intended to go to children, which is why many of them never survived. Uh, yeah, they, they just didn't survive. Now, there are quite a few out there. Uh, and if you get somebody like a Scott or a Brian that knows how to, you know, if you give Brian something to work with, I mean, the H1204, uh, the the overall construction of that harmony, I don't think ever matched originally what, what the silver tone was. So to bring any volume or, or depth from it at all uh, is a bit of a miracle, in my opinion, for, for what that guitar is. But... Uh, uh, but the X bracing definitely helped the tone and the sound, and it's perfect for just being around the house playing that kind of thing. Uh, and 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 I need that because I'm already starting to wear the fretboard on this guitar that I'm holding in my hands right now because I play it so much. Uh, but I will tell you that in my life, I've not played a guitar that played like this, like this Silver Tone 319 ever. I just never have played a guitar like it. 
And every now and again, I'll I'll uh, pitch the dice out there, and I will, you know, uh, pick up something in in hopes that I'll I'll, I'll reproduce this again, you know. Uh, uh, and you know, I I haven't haven't had that happen yet, but uh, uh, it doesn't mean that what I what I did get wasn't quality work because it is. And this harmony, as you could hear in the video, had had a good tone to it, and uh, and it's really good for sitting around uh, noodling stuff out. So this this tune. <laughs> this guitar over here after I picked it up because I had my hands for like three days playing it you know and it does play really really well now they both have Martin retro 12s in case somebody's curious they both these guitars have Martin retro 12s first thing I did when I got the harmony took strings off put Martin retro 12s on it uh, because I love Martin retro 12s on my acoustics and that's what's on every single acoustic over here across this wall over here they're all in cases okay uh, humidified but uh, uh, yeah it, it's just difference between one guitar and another you know but uh, again this this one back here this harmony is one that I'll I'll uh, I'll utilize for noodling stuff up and that kind of thing and maybe writing a little music and uh, uh, that that sort of thing and taking that on the back porch when the temperature is right or if somebody wants to, uh, if I'm going somewhere and somebody wants to pick a little bit, I, I may take that guitar because I, I can, I can assure you, I will be careful. This guitar very cautiously ever goes outside. I mean, the temperature has to be like 72 degrees. The humidity needs to be exactly 45 percent. At which point, I, I will, and I'll double check it, and then maybe I'll take it out back. But, but I'm so worried watching my phone about the temperature and the humidity changing. You know, because. Uh, outside the humidity can change on a, on a dime right but it's a nice guitar uh, uh, this one and uh, it's still folks still my favorite a $60 catalog guitar <laughs> it just now it's been rebuilt and it's no longer a $60 guitar I assure you but the fretting on this guitar in the neck I've never felt a neck like this one ever ever on any guitar i've never had another neck like this i tried with uh uh with one uh, not too long ago uh but the, the neck just was different it wasn't it, it's not the same neck now the neck on the guitar i'm talking about that was a that was a great great build it was a custom build that i had done this neck i've, I've yet to have anybody reproduce this neck and this fretting of, of this thing is just it's just just beautiful clear winter still to me but uh but i was very pleased to get that and i got it at a good price so i'm very happy with it and pleased uh pleased that i picked it up right because you you know and right now, as it stands, I only need one more, and then I'll be done. I mean, it's just one last guitar i got to have, and then, and then I'll stop, you know, uh, as soon as I get one more, okay? Let me know what you think in the comments. Take care of your friends. Take care of your family. God bless. We'll see you next time.